and welcome. Cynthia Miller here and I'm so very excited to paint this Wheel of Life with you. This is for the Northern Hemisphere and until we got going with this I didn't even really think about the Southern Hemisphere but we will be doing one of those shortly so please stay tuned. We're um, starting with the moon and the sun in the center and it is uh, very similar to uh, Mandala being the circle and I, I truly believe that starting in the center and working your way out um, from that point is, is the way to go. Although I always say um, when we're doing this in class to, to bring your paper back so that north is at the top of your page because it, it is a little bit confusing sometimes once we get everything painted and we start to label everything we want to make sure that we've got everything facing the, the way that we want. So we've got the moon on the left, the sun on the right, and we've got uh, a, another small circle that we're going to put in the spiral of life. And there's all kinds of uh, fun um, sort of um, applications to this one that relate to, to things in my life um, in particular. So we're starting out with a purple crocus and we're um, beginning in the east really um, which is where I've learned everything begins where the sun comes up um, fresh flowers um, bursting from the earth um, this is really all about the magic of mother earth and the cycles that she goes through so I thought since I'm in the purple mauve I would do the lavender I've got three sprigs of lavender and yes I have lots uh, blooming in the garden in the spring. I'm going to put some nice fresh green uh, for leaves on um, a yellow flower represents daffodils. So this whole idea of, of um, new life is really the theme for the East. And um, behind these beautiful flowers, once we get going here, you'll see that I've imposed a, a very light mauve color uh, egg. And the egg is representative of new life. And as you know, the spring, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, is when um, everything is, just shoots from the, the ground in, in, from the trees and, and from the plants in incredible speed. So if you'd like to paint this, I have the template posted on my website and the link is in the description. Um, this uh, flower that I'm doing now is a snowdrop and if you don't have snow, you probably don't have snowdrops. So they are found in um, the east and the west in, in Canada and some places in the US, but uh, I think, I'm not sure if they're in, in Europe or not. Um, but they're a beautiful uh, white flower that shoots out of the, the snow, uh, along with the crocuses usually. And uh, the yellow flowers I mentioned, the daffodil, and that's sort of um, representing the, um, the Easter uh, season. And so this is all about the spring, um, Easter, um, what happens to Mother Earth in the spring. She bursts forth with all this wonderful new growth. I'm using a little bit of um, sort of a blue green for the lavender. They have a uh, nice sort of um, round loopy looking leaves. Um, their flowers are quite unique, uh, just a, a top of, of clusters of, um, of the the mauve purple flowers and um, just a tiny little one just about an inch or two underneath the main the main bloom. I'm just going back here to um, color in the the leaves of my crocus. So I will go into the pagan names, the directional uh, elements, the um, different um, parts of the calendar um, at the end, once I get all the colors in, I don't want to be overwhelming or confusing for you. I've got um, a vine drawn out here, and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to make this um, into. It, it occurred to me that I wanted to put more medicinal plants in it. So this actually becomes my nettle plant. 
Um, nettles are uh, grown in the wild here in British Columbia and um, they're just so um, filled with nutrients and vitamins and minerals so I'll, uh, I'll touch on that later as well. I'm just um, sketching in or at least um, wetting down the egg that I talked about a, a moment ago. Um, I'm using a beautiful mauve color and I'm like I said I'm sort of in, superimposing it behind the the spring flowers because I want it to be part of the um, of the picture but I don't want it to be on its own. Everything is connected and I, I do want to sort of portray that um, everything sort of just blends into the next thing that comes along. So this is um, a little bit tricky but it, it works. It's It's just a simple fill in of the mauve color behind the flowers that I already have painted. And you want to just make sure that everything is dry before you do that. Um, anything that touches another uh, part of your page that is wet is going to, to bleed into it. So you want to make sure that you've got um, a dry paper to start with. So I've turned my paper around and we're getting closer to the summer season now. And again, um, the mauve color and I'm, I'm trying to use colors that, that um, I love that uh, sort of blend from one section to another. So this is a, another purple that we've got here. And this is the echinacea flower. And the echinacea is something that grows wild here. Um, sometimes uh, known as cone flower and uh, again, medicinal, um, Lots of people might see echinacea um, for colds, uh, lots of vitamin C, and of course they, they supply um, food for the birds as well because they have this big cone of seeds that develop on the top of the flowers. So um, I didn't include any birds or, or animals in this one, um, but um, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe one day I will. <laughs> so here we have the, the purple echinacea flower and I'll go back and put the cone part on top once that dries. So just going back in there now that it's dried and just dabbing in a nice light golden color and just representing the seeds. And I go back in there with a little bit of a darker color, outline the, the bottom of it and um, and finish it up with uh, just again just dashes just making it look like uh, little seeds are are growing on the cone and then finishing up with a stem of a dark green now this next step you might want to practice on a spare piece of paper first to get the the sort of the this the slant the swoop the the flow of of these um, uh, brown sort of golden brown colored grain. This is grain. Um, you could do ancient grain, um, wheat, whatever, but um, this basically is getting into the, the summer, um, almost harvest time, um, and it represents um, this, this time on the calendar wheel. Now one of the key aspects of this design is that everything emerges from the center. The center point is where the moon and the sun meet and it is where I, I try to have all the plants and components of this design sort of emanate from. So this next piece is a squash and the reason why I chose squash is because it is one of three vegetables grown by the Native Americans and I, I find that this is just such a, a wonderful thing to include. And so they would plant squash uh, with corn and beans. So the beans would grow up the stalks of the corn and the squash would uh, spread itself on the floor of the garden and uh, keep everything cool and mulched and keep the bugs away, keep the pests um, and the, um, the weeds, of course, down. So I, I love that these three are incorporated. Now, as we turn it towards the fall, we are um, filling in this lovely yellow flower, uh, sunflower, that um, again uh, creates these beautiful seeds in the center. And if you actually look at um, a, a sunflower as the seeds ripen and uh, again create food for the birds and for people, 
um, it, it's like a spiral pattern. It, it's unfortunately, I can't really show that um, in the angle here, but it's, it's one of those beautiful um, sacred geometric patterns that we find in nature. And I love that it is such a, it provides oil, it provides seeds, it, 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 it's for wildlife, it's for people. It's, it's just amazing what this beautiful plant does. So after a couple of layers to give this flower some depth and, and really uh, bring out the petals, we put the, the cone on with the, again, just little dabs to make those seed pods stand out. And of course, finishing up with, with stems. Now I did uh, go back and put some leaves on these flowers. They seem to be lacking the leaves in this first layer, but I did add those before finishing this up. So turning it completely now to having the, the autumn or the fall at the top of the paper, I am now filling in the uh, beans that um, sort of meander and wind their way around the corn stalk. And uh, you'll be able to see this as it progresses. Uh, sometimes it's sort of hard to see the, the sketch until you get things, um, there we go to get things uh, colored in. But um, uh, yeah, beans grow so quickly. They're, they're uh, long lasting. They last through the summer. Um, at least in our gardens, they give us lots of, of beautiful fresh beans. And sometimes I, I dry them if they've, if they've been left too long. And these ones have a little bit of uh, reddish color to them. I think these are representing the, the dragon beans that I, uh, they're just so easy to grow. So love the beans, love the corn, and of course this goes with the squash that I mentioned earlier. The three plants that are, are just such a perfect combination in our gardens here. So I'm just filling in the yellow for the corn and the cob. Um, when you think of, of how corn grows, there's these beautiful big leaves that encompass this, this cob in the center, and it just sort of emerges. And so you want it to be set in within the leaves. And the leaves are just a light green, sometimes a little bit of yellow in them, sometimes deeper shades of, of green. But um, it, it was really fun doing this pattern because, of course, the beans twist around the stalk and, and give it that illusion um, that, uh, that they're growing together. So, um, just take your time when you sketch it out and it, you know, the, the sketch must look good before you put, um, color to it. It is sort of hard to fix any, uh, sketching issues with paint. Once you start putting that color on there, you want that sketch to, to look like what you want there. So I'm playing around with my greens and, um, you know, they say greens really do make or break a picture. And so what I'm looking for is a really nice dark green. And the plant that I'm going to uh, paint next is the cannabis. And the reason why I chose the cannabis, because it has helped so many people and, and more recently than, than ever before. I mean, in the past, the hemp plant has been used to create rope and, and paper and, and um, even cloth and um, building material, but it was it was just um, sort of forgotten about for so long, um, either hidden or forgotten, I'm not sure, but so hemp did not have the medicinal properties. Cannabis has the medicinal properties, and I won't go into it too much, but uh, basically these uh, plants and the properties, so many people um, have benefited from using this plant in, um, you know, whatever dose that they require for pain, anxiety, insomnia, um, nervousness, um, just not being able to settle down. I think we live such busy lives and, and this plant has really helped a lot of people relax and, and just, um, you know, sort of just be. And so I just thought it was worthy to put it in here. I like the look of it. It's got many spiky leaves. Um, and again, you can you can um, sort of have a look at, at the design of it, but they've got 
many, many different um, kinds and um, shapes and, and um, but the way they grow is kind of neat. So I just thought it would be uh, fun to put something like that in along with um, mushrooms coming up next. You know, a lot of people are finding medicinal mushrooms very helpful uh, for many of the same symptoms and um, immune system as well. So um, have fun with, with creating your own uh, wheel of life. You can put plants in that grow in your backyard that, that are medicinal or just, just pretty plants. This is, um, I think, a really lovely thing to to create and, and frame. And then when you have it on your wall, you can sort of see the, the, the seasons going by, the, the plants that are coming up and, and um, sort of help you to, to gauge what um, you know, what's coming up in the season and, and um, sort of remind you how, how wonderful Mother Earth is with all the things that she provides. I just love that we can just keep adding to this beautiful design, the Wheel of Life through the many cycles. So the next up are the three little mushrooms that sort of, um, I like the way that they're placed here. They sort of look like they're, again, coming from the center, but growing up towards the side of the tree. And um, you can almost see inside them. And again, uh, the mushrooms, there's there's many companies that now sell different types of, of mushrooms. And they're really good for immunity, cognitive function. Uh, you can take them many different ways. I've, I've uh, taken them in my drinks before. And they don't have to be the, the hallucinogenic ones to be of help. Um, these are just uh, regular mushrooms that grow in our forest. In fact, many people forage for them and they have different times where the buyers uh, come to purchase them from, from the foragers, restaurants buy them. Um, many people are growing them in their basements. Um, mushrooms are, are very nutritional. And as I mentioned, they've got lots of really good components to them that help people with a lot of different things. So um, the, the key for the mushrooms, I think, is to keep the inside of the mushroom the darkest and have that stem look like it's just sort of going up into the center of the mushrooms. And um, yeah, I like the way these turned out. Tiny little caps and, and you can tell they're mushrooms. So I decided to include a mountain top, and the reason why I wanted to do that it's in the in the north uh, part, which is the earth element, and mountains really do add a lot to nature. They have they hold the snow, which releases very gradually throughout the year, so we have a good water supply. Um, they they have the streams, the the beautiful uh, meadows. The, the um, birds migrate, the animals migrate up and down the mountains, and, and they really are um, part of my uh, neighborhood. So I wanted to honor them by um, putting just a, a tiny little mountain here. And um, I, I love the way that it turned out. There's, there's lots going on um, with the grays and, and the, the browns, but um, it, it really is a part of, of Mother Earth and part of this this design and collection. Now I don't have my tree of life quite done in the north yet but I'm going to show you how to map out where to um, to input the the elements. So we're talking about air in the east, uh, fire in the south, water in the west, and earth in the north. And so I'm just mapping out the directions as four quadrants on the circle. And the elements are halfway between each of those points. So mark out north, south, east, west, and then just go halfway between. And those are where you're going to put the marks for the elements. So for instance, the north is the, the earth, and it goes halfway into the quadrant that you drew on either side. So I'm just pointing out with, with my pencils and, and brushes here where those are. I hope that helps.
So have a look at where these lines are and this is where we're going to paint in the um, earth for the north. And so I decided to use two colors for each one and for the earth I'm going to use uh, just a bit of a brown on the edge and then green for the rest of it. I'm going to put enough water on there so that the paint slants outward from the center of the page and so they'll have um, the, the the paint will will sort of flow uh, away from the center which is the the idea that I want I want it to be um, coming away from the center so you can see the brown strip and putting on the green there just two colors of the earth element So I let that dry a little bit and I'm doing the one that is opposite the north now. So the south is the fire element and so I'm putting lots of water on there. I'm preparing to hold up the paper and you can have a board behind it if you want. I just I think was a little bit uh, anxious to get on with this and um, I decided in a, a flame there is a purple uh, center. Uh, think of the, the blue or purple flame that you sometimes see in the center of a fire. And I wanted that to be the, the second color. Now I do add orange and yellow and red and, and everything else, but basically um, it is the, uh, the purple that, that gives it a little bit of a contrast here. So I continue to paint that around with um, outward strokes and sort of making marks that make it look like a fire. So then I let that one dry a little bit and this one is in the east so this is the air element and I'm going to put on a blue sky and the second color will be white clouds. Now it's pretty easy to, to put on the paint uh, especially when it's on a slant you just sort of let it flow downward and you can make um, cloud shapes if you want in the blue instead of doing what I did this looks a little bit um, elementary the, the way that I put this uh, color on here but I wanted it to be you know just sort of interesting and I, that's how I make things interesting <laughs> I use a little tissue in a, a round shape and pull off some of the blue to make it look like there's some white clouds there so that is air in the east and then the last one is the autumn and so the autumn is the water element. And so I love the way that these colors really frame all the, the plants and, and the colors that I've chosen already. I've used, um, you know, not really pastel colors, but they're not rich, vibrant, except for maybe the, the yellow flower. Um, I like that there's blue on either side. I think that um, this makes a really nice frame for it, although I don't use all of the the parts of the elements as you'll see in the in the final product. So this is the template for the text and it is available on my website for you to download and copy the the words onto your artwork. The pagan names as I mentioned starting with the top one at north in December is Yule and remember this is the northern hemisphere wheel of life. Uh, February 1st comes in bulk, basically the midway between um, Yule and Astera. So Astera is like Easter, it's at spring equinox. We're going to have a look at the element air, uh, spring equinox, February, March, April, basically uh, turning into south now with the summer solstice. This is May, June, July. We've got just on the edge of Beltane, Lathan Laksana, and uh, then into the west, this is Mabong, and this is the water element, the southwest of fire, um, basically August, September, October, with the harvest season, and then back to the north. So have a good look at all the sections. I've added the tree to the north, along with the northern star, which I've shaped like a Merkaba, which is an energetic bundle of energy like we are. And I've added a bumblebee to the center. 
I'd like to just take your gaze into the center and see the bumblebee. I thought that was a really nice way to finish up. And I um, went over the nettle leaves, as you can see, made them a little bit spiky. And I also added some leaves to the squash plant. It looked like it was just sort of all alone. So you can see the squash leaves there. And also I filled in a spiral at the base of the tree. I wanted that spiral to be special and it looks like the cross section of a tree. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I love making these every year. It's a little bit different. And uh, remember to go to the website. There's lots of free stuff there for you. Take care, have fun. Thank you.